What was done cannot be undone. But we can end the silence. We can stop turning our heads away. We can look at you in the eye and finally say on behalf of the American people, what the United States government did was shameful. And I am sorry. All right, man, we back. Episode three, I believe, of R.E.O.P. Declassified. The uh, conspiracy slash... The real information, my brother. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, the woke, yeah, the conspiracy slash woke slash crime knowledge podcast. Uh, we back. Episode three, I got uh, homie Banks on this episode. And we're going to talk about how the government ain't shit how the government been fucking us black individuals up since forever I would like to start this episode off by saying fuck Christopher Columbus we'll get more into that in a second but I'll let uh, Banks introduce himself hey man what need to be said sometimes don't need to be said but this is Banks No Rest 2 follow me at Instagram, Twitter I'm not going to plug anything else that I'm a part of. Y'all see the link tree. Just understand we're here. We're about to give y'all some knowledge after this. Please do y'all Googles. We're going off our research. So y'all do y'all research and understand. Fuck Christopher London. Christopher Columbus, like my brother said. Fuck London as well. I'm up here stunning, but fuck London as well. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Fuck, yeah, fuck all them sailors that was all on them ships. That's one of the reasons why... Uh this a lot of this shit happened but i said i started off by saying fuck christopher columbus because he was one of the people original people that even spread his syphilis around so on this episode we're going to talk about the, the the tuskegee experiments which were experiments experiments on um what's what's the proper term for it on africans yeah on it, real Africans, yeah, real Africans, man. It, it's crazy out here. So, I'm stuttering because, like, I inhale all this uh, information because I always knew about the Tuskegee experiments, but I didn't know like all the details about it. And it's shit crazy, man. So, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this episode now, I hit up Banks because it's a lot of talk going around because you know we are in the corona era the coronavirus era and it's a lot of talk going around about people not wanting to take the vaccines and i'm not about to i'm not about to talk talk about uh if i'm an anti-vaxxer because i'm not an anti-vaxxer i believe in taking the vaccine but it is a lot of black people out here saying they don't want to take the vaccines out here and i'm seeing other people uh, shun them for not wanting to take vaccines and whatnot. And I'm basically, and we're basically going to talk about this because it's legit reasons why black people don't want to take vaccines and whatnot. And it's a lot of legit reasons why black people don't like to go to the doctors. And one of the one of the main causes of this is because of the Tuskegee experiments. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, going back to what you just said, and it relates to the CDC, and when we get into the CDC and how it correlates with the Tuskegee experiments, it's relating to how, you know, not particularly us, but, you know, you got a lot of people out there who are, some are actually anti-vaxxers, but they, they you know, anybody that's anti-anything, they go too beyond crazy with it without doing any research. Like apparently on Twitter yesterday, they said that if you get this, somebody tweeted out, and this is how a lot of misinformation goes out and not even from the media. It used to be the media used to be the receivers of the information and then they would filter it to us. But now people could just say anything on Twitter and they go, wow. Like apparently somebody yeah. said yesterday, if you take the vaccine, it gives you cerebral palsy and it's like, on what basis and that tweet actually went viral because of that yeah you talking about the picture with the people with the screwed up faces 
Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, people just ran with that because they saw it and because nobody knows and we won't know exactly how this COVID-19 thing actually or what it is until years from now. So if people see anything like that, whether it relates to, hell, you, you losing the eyelash or anything relating to your mental stability, anything chemically imbalanced like that will make people go crazy just because there's no information as to what this COVID thing is and it, what actually entails and what's in the vaccine. Yeah, I will say this. If there is a, uh, well, there's, it's already been confirmed that there's a, a COVID vaccine. From doing research on the Tuskegee experiments, no matter what vaccine they can make, don't got shit on these experiments because they were in the Tuskegee experiments, they were getting injected daily with all kind of vaccines and they were uh, subject to spinal tap. So whatever we got going on ain't got shit compared to what was going on with these uh these black gentlemen back in 1942. Not saying the not saying that just because uh what's probably gonna go on with us is not as severe, but we can still possibly get fucked over. I don't know. Are you gonna take the vaccine the first go around or are you just gonna wait a little bit? I'm as a person that's let me clarify, I think I said this the other day on another one of my platforms. <clears throat> I said I'm not an anti vaxxer. Me no, I said this at on a personal phone call with somebody close to me. I said I'm not taking the vaccine probably ever, unless it's a requirement by a job or something, because eventually you're going to have to take the vaccine in some capacity to be able to work or be around people. So up until that point, I'm not taking a vaccine unless I feel like I should really do it. Now, they actually have apparently a Cuban vaccine that's made by the Cuban government. I don't know exactly what that is entail so I won't get into death or try to figure out speculate what it is but apparently they have that out there but as of now no I won't take the vaccine unless it's a requirement and I'm not scared of what can happen but I'm not taking how do you feel about like people from like old companies I think Ticketmaster came out and said if you don't take the vaccine you can't go to a fucking concert do you think that's bullshit well the only way you can get me to take the vaccine if it's a concert I actually want to go to or the Bulls make the finals. But otherwise than that, let's say if it's Travis Scott, like if he's the only one that's performing next year, oh, I'm definitely not taking the vaccine. I'd rather get COVID than go to a Travis Scott concert. <laughs> that's funny as fuck. But yeah, I felt the same way. I was like, all right, so if you want to go to WrestleMania and different shit, different events, like you have to have the vaccine taken and I don't know I'm, I'm still on the fence I don't know whether I'm going to take the vaccine but I know for a fact I'm not going to take it that like the first batch like the first strand of that shit I'm not fucking with it for a while probably like a year from now but from what um, uh, what's the dude named Dr. Fossey I, I, I be trying not to pronounce dude name wrong he said if we just do a lockdown, we should be straight, so that's not that's not gonna happen though. I mean, we they tried to do that uh worldwide and Americans said after about a month or two, you know what, fuck that, we're going outside. Whereas now and most of the Asian countries yeah. or the, you know, the countries in Asia a lot of them are just out and they're having mass gatherings and they've been having those since summertime because they did the actual lockdown properly. You only go out when you need to do the essentials. Whereas greedy, but greedy capitalist America just said, all right, you know what? We're going to open up. Even if you don't have a job, have a blast, go out, go to the beach, yeah. chill out. Well, I think a lot of those countries was lying about their lockdown anyway. Because you notice a lot of the, I think like Ireland, they were saying they were doing a complete lockdown. Um, different places, um, uh, Korea, not Korea, yeah, South Korea, well, both Koreas, they was doing lockdowns and they still got high numbers. So it's like, 
somebody lying. Yeah, once again, it goes back to, you know, the media and misinformation because for me, and you can tell me, to the best of my knowledge, they said months ago, not even months ago, they said a month ago, well, the vaccine should be out by February, March. They treating the vaccine like it's a PS5 release, by the way. Uh, yeah, that's also crazy. Yeah, the, the PS5 might be the vaccine, but they told us a month ago, well, it'll be out by March, April, and then hopefully everything opens up mid to late 2021. And then the other day in the UK, an 80 year old elderly lady was the first participant for the vaccine and she actually got it. Now we don't know the results yet. We may find out or they might just, you know, it goes to me and how I treated the media since I was a teenager. I'm like, okay, I don't, that, that sounds like a movie. You know, yeah. we might not ever hear about this person again, or they might say, yeah, the 100th person to ever get the vaccine, they seem to be pretty good. But then they might start telling us about how these people are doing after the vaccine and they had no side effects, but then they might not tell us the people that actually might get sick from the side effects, if there's side effects. Now with us, particularly us being African men, we should know because based on what we're talking about with the Tuskegee experiments, we need to know exactly what it tells with us because history has shown. And if people think I'm lying, this isn't this woke talk, but this isn't like weird koofy talk or whatever you want to call it. This is actual talk. If you want to look up research, they say our body and everything evolved with us is totally different from any species on this planet. That's why a lot of them say that we have, I think, a deficiency in vitamin B or D. Can't remember which one. That's why they tell a lot of us to take vitamin B or, or D because we have a deficiency in that. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely heard of that. So um, let's get into the Tuskegee experiments and let's talk about, well, let me talk about one of the reasons why the, the Tuskegee experiments was uh, brought along. So I was saying um, earlier, I was saying fuck Christopher Columbus because he was one of the main, he's apparently one of the main targets on why syphilis was spreading around. So syphilis basically is a sexually sexually transmitted disease caused by, uh, I think it just, it's called bacterium. It's a lot of uh, big words I'm not familiar with. The signs and symptoms of syphilis vary from depending in which uh, four stages is presented primary, secondary, latent, and territorial. The primary stage classically presents with a single, what's that word? A firm, uh, cankery, a firm, painless, non itchy skin ulcer, ulceration. So that's basically like spots and blotches on the skin. And I don't know, Banks, I don't know if you've seen like videos of like some of the black men that was. Uh, exam being examined during the Tuskegee experiments, like they skin was breaking out crazy, like they almost look like lizard people. The shit was outrageous. Did you see that? Yeah, I seen that. It's a play too on the Black Plague that allegedly, you know, wiped out most of the European population. I don't know exactly where in Europe, but it on the Black Plague, which is syphilis. But yeah, it's many stages of uh, syphilis. Some of the most notorious Yakubs ever had syphilis, uh, including we just said Christopher Columbus, Adolf Hitler, and Al Capone are some of the most famous people to ever have syphilis. Also, King Charles the Eighth. Okay, King Charles, add his ass to the list. So, um, add him to the list. So, in um, in 1908. A Japanese, a Japanese scientist by the name of Dr. Sahara, I hope I pronounced his name right, discovered uh, uh, Salvezo. Now, man, I'm not in the medical field, so a lot of these like terms and shit, I'm gonna fuck up on them. Uh, I think it's called Salvezon. It's like a medicine. It somewhat uh, reversed the symptoms of syphilis, but it also made people lose their arms. So he was so people was taking his medicine and like their legs and shit was falling off. So yeah. one of the reasons why 
this was brought to the black community, well, Alabama, because they had a high percentage of people, uh, people with syphilis, which was actually black men. I think it was, was it like 32% or some shit like that? 35%. Yeah. It was 35% of the black men in Alabama had syphilis. So one of the reasons why it was uh, brought to Alabama was because they can, they were, they felt like they can do experiments on black people without uh, getting any pushback from it. Yeah, so from my research as well, <clears throat> it was 600 African men who came into the study. So out of the 600, and you know, they were offered, as we talked about before on air, uh, they were offered free meals, free healthcare exams, and also a proper burial because around that time, because our people was in oppression, you couldn't even, even after you die, you couldn't get a proper barrier. You couldn't get a, a proper send off yeah. for labor, but you know. So out of those 600 men, 399 tested positive for syphilis and 201 of them tested negative. And about, yeah, so about, 30, is that 35%? I'm not, you know, my math is good, but it ain't that good. So that's about 35%, like you said. And yeah, about 128 good. participants died too as well. So those, those numbers not that good. <laughs> those numbers don't add up as well. So 128 died. Hold on, let me, uh, yeah, 128 died, 40 were, inf 40 infected their wives and 19 passed it on to their children. And all of these were like sharecroppers that were illiterate. So these these um these black men they weren't really making money like that anyway so that's kind of enticing especially somebody that's like illiterate who can't read at all and like barely making like barely making pennies sharecropping when you tell them like hey you get free medical care which they weren't getting at all you get free medical care you get free meals you get burial which they didn't tell them that for you to get the burial, you had to get an autopsy done. So they weren't really telling them like everything that was going on. So they were pretty much lying. And then I don't know if you saw this, but like it was a bunch of like most of them was like dropping out. They was they were like, yeah, man. Especially when they got that first spinal tap, they're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm done with this shit. And then they kind of kind of like had the nurses go around saying telling them like. Hey, if you come back, we'll give you every day you come back, we'll give you a free meal and we'll give you a ride from the from um from the doctor's office to work. So they were just using anything to get them to get the experiments done on them. I want to ask you this too, because I did small research but not enough, so I won't talk about it too much because I want to sound like I know something, even though I'm going based on my Google, what I've seen on YouTube, et cetera. That's research kids. So from my understanding, syphilis attacks the heart. It causes heart failure. What else does it I don't think it has anything to do with the lungs, but I think liver. And this correlates to where I'm going. So you gotta this is you said without an autopsy, right? Or they did this with an autopsy before they bury you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you had to be buried. You had to be, well, you had to be dead first to get an autopsy. Well, of course, that's what an autopsy is. Right, but you know, it, it, it's going back to what I'm thinking about right now and uh, a topic that's been going on for a while. And this, this, it correlates to what I'm talking about as well. So I won't go way off topic, but it correlates with body harvesting as well with African-Americans, particularly African men and how much you can get for each organ. So I would have to do my research probably while we on air right now to look up exactly where it affects the body at. Because if I'm not mistaken, even, you know, dead organs of African men, particularly, they still sell for something to a certain extent in the black market. And also the foundation that, you know, funded, uh, the Tuskegee experiment with also the Rockefeller Foundation, who, you know, that goes without saying. 
Oh yeah, when they when they said autopsy and this mean this meaning, it just mean more experiments. It just mean like they were doing more experiments on them while they died. That's basically what they they used the word autopsy. It just that just it it was just a good way of saying, hey, we're gonna do more experiments on you after you died. Absolutely, because African organs, if I'm not mistaken, for a heart alone is ten thousand dollars. You can, your heart is worth ten thousand dollars, black man, to everybody else. And you know, you can we'll say that for another podcast. But if you do your research as to who's getting these organs, look at those people. They look like they halfway dead, but yet they still alive somehow. That's crazy. I gotta do some real. I didn't know about that. That's wild. Yeah, Dick Cheney is one of them names. That man had four heart attacks. Oh, and he was. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. So he was probably friends, Harry's right. or whatever. Yeah, them as well. You see how that man be snuffed up, <clears throat> looking like a skinny Paul Bear. Yeah, <laughs> but they were doing that back in like the president days. Cause you know George Washington, he had slave teeth in his mouth. You know everybody. You know the whole rumor, the jokes they said in school. The teachers teach you that George Washington had wooden teeth, but really he had slave teeth in his mouth. So they always been uh, using black yeah. people uh, limbs and shit to. Uh, yes, we, we you know it's, we we've always been props, man. You know it's it's always been because, like I said before, we're if you want to go that way without the jokes, we are you know the bottomy of this earth. We embody this earth. There's nothing like us on this planet. From you know ones that's athletic to unathletic to creative and you got to understand where that comes from but you got to understand those that's not qualified to look like you and have the same dna structure or density as you they tend to figure out how can i take from you but you can take anything from an african but you can't take their spirit the spirit is forever yeah and also i don't know if you've seen this also and um so they started this whole they started the Tuskegee experiments in 1932 so did you see that in 1935 they pretty much found out that like penicillin was a good way to reverse the reverse of the symptoms of uh, syphilis but like they kept doing these experiments yeah absolutely uh penicillin I was just looking that up too I don't have the history of the penicillin how long it's been out but like you said 1935 is when they officially announced like hey there actually is a cure for syphilis but we're not gonna tell the negroes and like we talked about on air this went on from what 1932 until 1972 yeah november 1972 yeah so 40 years and then it kept on going so the cdc document leaked out that they were experimenting on Africans with the Tuskegee experiment that was funded by the government and once again the Rockefeller Foundation. But they didn't shut it down till November and nobody questioned that. If the US government wants to shut down hell, they want to shut down your water supply right now and say you got to pay a thousand dollars, they can do that at this very moment. So with something like that that's being funded by them and other people they had the power to shut it down immediately but it kept going on going until november so i hope people don't think oh yeah we're just gonna give it a couple of months because we gotta figure out the logistics of shutting it down no that's not how it works if the u.s government want to shut you down like i just said they could shut you down but instead it kept going on it was like well we probably got enough negroes we did enough experiments let's just put this in the back we'll use this probably 38 years from now yeah and it wasn't really from when i was doing my research I feel like they were doing other experiments that had nothing to do with syphilis, dog. Like, if you knew, I I just got a question. Like, how didn't they, when they, the guys that was getting the experiments done, was it one of those situations where it was like too little, too late? Because it had to be known at some point, even if like around 1972, that the cure, it was already like somewhat of a cure out pen, uh, with the penicillin. Did they like, was it like announced on the news? Were there any like, articles? Like, Nothing was it well spread? I, I didn't. I didn't see anything about my knowledge that they said the CDC, who is you know giving the vaccine out as well, which is the center, 
disease control, or I'm probably messing up the acronym, but it's something along the lines of that, where where they didn't announce, they just said, because remember, this is everything is going through the newspaper, so it's still controlled media, but it's not out like we have it where you can look at it and then decipher it for your own. Yeah. For our people in particular, because of fucked up oppression, they couldn't read because they weren't allowed to read. So if you see something and you might have syphilis and they did experiment on you, you can't read to see that, hey, damn, they got a cure for this shit. Let me go see if I can get it. You can't because it's like being locked, you know, kind of literally locked away where I can't go get medical help for this. So it, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I didn't see a newspaper article and I could look into it while we we're talking, but I don't see, I didn't see anything about a news article saying that, hey, we got the cure for this. And more times than not, not with any type of disease, particularly that affects us, like <clears throat> HIV, even though the HIV <laughs> is a topic we could have on another podcast or right now, if you want, about how that affected yeah. us and more so the homosexual community. So with syphilis, they didn't say anything about, you know, penicillin being a cure to the best of my knowledge, but I can look it up and find out. Yeah, I don't, I just, even even if we was to look it up, I just, and now that I think about it, they were illiterate. Also, you can just look at this shit, just like look at the numbers and tell that this wasn't supposed to happen because they they brought 600 people in and like two of 200, I think it was like two or one of them didn't have syphilis. And they still experimented on the people that didn't have syphilis. Like they just was doing like guinea pig shit on them just because. Yeah, and then the four hundred, the four hundred men didn't even know they had syphilis. A lot of them didn't even know, didn't even find out they had syphilis until they tried to get drafted into the. They got drafted into the war, and they was doing medical examinations on them, and that's when they found out. I was gonna bring that up to you too because. Tuskegee, Alabama, well, they had the experiment, and then we know as the Tuskegee Airmen as well, which had a movie with Larry Fishburne in it, aka Lawrence Fishburne in it, that came out in 1995. So in 1941, the Tuskegee Airmen was founded for Africans to fight in World War II, which makes me think, okay, at that point, if anybody had the disease, how in the fuck were they flying the aircraft? And it's crazy that they, and this may be a credit to, to us because we always figure everything out, even if we don't have all the tools. How do you fly aircraft if you can't read properly? Even though you can be walked through flying the aircraft, but at the same time, it's a fucking aircraft. You gotta have some type of you know, navigation. Yeah, you know, man. They just don't give a fuck. They were like, "Hey, man, a hey, nigga die for us." So it's one of those situations where, like, they don't give a fuck as long as you went in the war for us. Right, but it makes me think: if somebody has syphilis, fighting a war, like, dude, how? That's a good question, man. It's a very good question. Yeah, but otherwise than that, you know, it, it, it's what it's kind of what we're seeing now. Like we we talked about with the virus, except for I can just say this: anything that's free, you always want to be weary of. You know, what I mean, especially if it's coming from the government, because yeah, it, it, it always has especially if they of, especially if they look for you. You didn't they 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 were preyed upon. These share all these guys were sharecroppers. They were pre preyed upon. Right, and I tried to look into why Tuskegee, Alabama was the focal point for the experiment. I couldn't particularly look up something, and that's something that they definitely have that's just classified because I couldn't look it up on my end. I just know now in 2020, the population in Tuskegee, Alabama is 83,240, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I don't know how it was in 1931 to 1941 because I would think it was uh, the numbers were drastically higher probably to what it was in 1931 to now. But that goes 
without saying for us in this country in particular, because we only make up, I think, 13.1% of America's population. Yeah. And that's all based on experiments and, you know, not no bullshit black on black violence, because that's not a real thing. Motherfuckers always, we ain't forget, hold on, my, my fault. I know we supposed to be talking about this, but we ain't forget how this whole long ass year, when everything was going on with God bless George Floyd and a lot of things was going on with fucking 12 shooting us, there was a lot of niggas out here talking about black on black crimes. I don't need to say no names. Y'all can look it up. They talking about, well, black people shooting at me and all that. That's besides the fucking point. And you know, I'm not talking about Black Lives Matter or anything. It goes without saying as to why we're the least in this country. It's not due to our own hands. We just, we're talking about a governmental experience experiment i'm sorry that's something that you can't avoid at all it would, if the government wants to do something to you the government will do something to you exactly yeah i agree with that and this shit, this right here this uh tuskegee experiments and this is going back to um it well it, it goes to now because I think this is one of the reasons why we, uh, as black people, we got lower life expectancy than any other, than anybody else. Because after this shit, people stop trusting doctors. Like most black people, like I st- I said it at the beginning of the show, most black people don't go to doctors after this because they don't tr- They like they like oh I don't trust the doctors, but this has a lot to do with it. Absolutely, uh, and I brought up. That's the article I talked about before we came on air. Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, KSLA News at 12 source says, and I quote, Tuskegee experiment history leads to coronavirus mistrust. Some African-Americans say they are against the corona, coronavirus vaccine. And I'm going to go into death, but it was just published yesterday which was December 10th at 1045 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the government talks, the governor, I'm sorry, John Bill Edwards, talks about how Louisiana hospitals have announced the arrival of Corona vaccine. And then they go into depth as to how many actual vaccine amounts they have, which is 135,000. And they go into depth about it. But you got people that saying, hey, even if I qualify to get it, I do not want to take it. And it leads back to the experiment we're talking about. And I can't think of another virus off the top of my head where they promised to help us with. But if you want to talk about something that's non health related, even though it kind of was, we could talk about Hurricane Katrina since I'm talking about Louisiana with those damn campers they was giving people, those trailer homes were like FEMA camps basically. They had a bunch of lead, they had a bunch of poisons in there, and a lot of people contracted cancer from that, living in those trailers, because it was either that or you live in, I don't think it was the Mercedes Benz Bowl, bowl at the time, in 20, 2005, I'm sorry. But, I think it was just a Superdome. There you go, so it was just a Superdome. So it was either living <clears> in the Superdome, <throat> wait for a FEMA check while living at the Superdome, and hopefully you can get a place or you can take a lot of those campers that had poison in. That's crazy. That could be that could be an episode right there. Oh, you want to talk about Katrina? <laughs> how, how many hours we got that day, bro? Yeah, we we, we can talk about Katrina one day. Yeah, because I found out something new about that. And how they talk about the levees. And how it correlates to 9 11. Some, some wild shit. So let's talk about like the outcome when this was discovered in 1972. So it was already like rules in place. Let me uh, look up the exact term of it. It was called the Nuremberg Code. I don't know if you've seen that, the Nuremberg Code. It was basically that was brought around because you know they were doing experiments during the concent- in the concentration camps. And that was basically a rule that was brought up. So, uh, meaning you can't do experiments on humans without them fully knowing what's going on. So it was already rules in place 
where shit or this Tuskegee experiment shouldn't have been going on, but it wasn't brought around. It wasn't fully developed in America because America thought that they couldn't, they shouldn't be able to follow rules because they felt like the people that were doing experiments in the consecration camp, they were barbarians. So the Americans felt like they weren't barbarians, but they were, they were barbarians because they were doing uh, test labs experiments on black people. So it pretty much was in the same vein. Yeah, I'm familiar with that rule. I'm looking it up right now. CDC, is it uh, change its research practices? The rules are it says something about safeguard, but I'm looking at the small part of it. Yeah, that, yeah. Look up the Nuremberg Code. Look that up. Okay. That's uh, that's basically just talking about how they was doing experiments in the concentration camps. I didn't fully look and see what exactly they were doing in the concentration camps. Hmm. You know what that makes me think about too? Uh, when those when the Latin people were in those basic const- concentration camps that happened, what was that last year? It's been happening for a, a couple years now, but last year in New Mexico and in El Paso, Texas, when they were separating from their families. Repeat that for me. When I'm sorry, so. Remember, it was last year or a couple of years ago. If I think it was probably this year as well. Fucking, I got my time line messed up in my head because it's been a long year. Yeah, it's been a crazy. But remember, year. they had. You remember they had the Latin people in basic concentration camps when they had the little kids wrapped up in like it wasn't even blankets. They looked like they had them in tinfoil wrapped up. That might have been yeah. That might have been last year. This is everything just matching together. But I think it should. I think it was last year. Right. That makes me think about concentration camps and what they're doing there. Because once again, the media stopped talking about that as well. Now I'm about to stop giving power to media because I feel like when you say the media is bullshit, either you sound like Alex Jones if you don't have proof, or you're just saying the media is bullshit and people should already know. But those make me think of concentration camps as well because it got swept away. Even though that was a year ago, they never said anything as to what ha- happened to those people because a lot of them were immigrants. A lot of them were illegal immigrants. And I'm just like, okay, this is this seems like a concentration camp you're putting them in and placing them in. And we haven't heard anything about that. Man, that shit was. Just, you remember when we were in uh, Ice Bay? You remember? Oh, that? when Shorty, everybody was uh, cooning about her? Yeah. That was a. Uh... That was the extreme. I don't think the timeline was ever sadder than that day. Was that this year? No, that was last year. Bro, once again, like I said, <laughs> everything, this has been a long ass year. So everything, you know, just it's a time paradox. And, you know, that's that's the whole thing of how I keep hearing that everybody was talking about how 2012 was supposed to be the end of the year on my birthday, ironically. It's always some weird shit happening on my birthday. Apparently now niggas gonna turn into X-Men this year. But it's always <laughs> it's some weird shit. But they said in 2012 that wasn't actually the end uh, of the world. It's 2020. They go by the Gargarian calendar, which is based on you know the number system that we have now like today is the 11th and it's friday and that's all unmathematical base whereas the mayans went by a calendar based on the time and place in the season yeah i think by the uh i could be wrong it should it's, i think it's supposed to be next year or was it supposed to be this year when it was really supposed to end uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say this year because it feel like the goddamn end of the year, uh, the end of the world. Yeah, pretty much. I think it was either supposed to be like this year or like next year, some shit like that. But <laughs> let's go with this year, bro, because it sure feel like the end of the, of the world this year. Well, shit. Um, we was just talking about the media. The media reported more people died from Corona the other day than 9/11. So there we go. Sounds like the end, of, the end of the world to me. I believe it, brother. I got people that's close to me that contracted the virus. And, you know, you know, shit is serious, but when it hit close to home, 
that's when you be like, oh shit. Like, you know, they talk about how, this is why I can't stand Twitter as well. And these woke motherfuckers that call themselves so-called woke, but they don't do their homework that talk about, you know, black people getting killed by each other. And it's like, you know, it's white motherfuckers shooting themselves and killing themselves more. Yeah. You know, if you want to go back, if you want to go back to Attila the Hunt, he was knocking motherfuckers' heads back. Genghis Khan killed a million people. It was King Henry, I think the seventh or one of those. He killed five million people. So you can't just justify your feelings on how you feel about your people based on somebody and it's unfortunate when rappers die it, it fuck it sucks it sucks like a motherfucker man when you see a young boy like and once again this has been a long ass year like i listened to pop smoke earlier and i was like god damn that was in february yeah that shit feel like it happened a long time ago but it hasn't even been close to a year yet so yeah that's what i'm saying so you can't base it on what you see in the media and what's being said around your way because yes it happens but you can't dignify it to make yourself feel better because you're trying to make yourself feel better by calling it black on black violence when if you go through history white motherfuckers had been killing themselves killing each other more than ever and they still do to this day because you know why it's called white supremacy what y'all perceive to be white supremacy is a bunch of redneck motherfuckers that can't read or write and they don't like you because they don't know who themselves are and a lot of them motherfuckers are inbred and that's the whole topic about the beginning of white people y'all don't want to fuck with me when it comes to this koofy talk i do homework but hey man one of the <laughs> people i brought up adolf hitler that has syphilis product of incest so yeah and, and that 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 correlates to anger because inbreeding brings a form of you know mental instability because you got your blood joining each other and it's, it's very close to each other so that's the topic for like i said another day and i say that often because you know i can keep going and going but yeah adolf hiller was a part of that who contracted syphilis and who killed a million people with an army and then you got al capone who was killing people who started gangs the real, I mean, he didn't start gangs because gangs go back thousands of years ago. Hell, the Roman Empire was a gang. Them motherfuckers was the real folks. They, they, they was the real folks. It was 100,000 niggas, like Fabio said, in the Roman Empire, <laughs> if not more. So it, it, it goes to that. Like, you can't justify it for black on black violence. Al Capone has syphilis. And if you've seen the movie uh, that came out earlier this year, he had dementia and he had syphilis and he looked like Golem the entire movie well he got dementia from syphilis that's like one of the outcomes of syphilis yeah it attacks the brain I gotta look into that so it attacks the brain I swear it attacks the lung the, your, your liver and your heart I don't your know heart, it... heart lungs also okay so all around all hands right, yeah. One of the one of the ways to know if somebody got syphilis if they got scaly hands. Mm, I think I've actually shook hands with somebody that had syphilis before. Damn, that's crazy. But yeah, if they got really bad, like their their hands like breaking out real bad, they got they it's a high chance they got syphilis, so they need to put some fucking lotion on. Either one of them. Either, either yeah. one of them. Yeah, this is me, a man downtown <clears throat> LA. Brother, I can tell you stories about downtown LA. I think everybody has everything downtown LA, and that's a shoot. <laughs> like if you go, if you ever go to downtown LA, I know you've been in and out of LA before. If you go to Skid Row on Los Angeles Street, that that makes you believe in everything that you hear about the Black Plague, about hot, real poverty. That makes you believe. If you go by the Bible, it makes you believe in the Bible. Yeah. And how you see people just probably have HIV and they just live with it. But they walk around, they put a smile on their face. Imagine that. Um, I'm not shocked, but yeah, that makes sense in LA. It's, I'm pretty sure it's like, like you said, it's like everything going around. But um, back to the Tuskegee, Tuskegee experiments, 
Of course, uh, the National Research Act of 1974 was put in place. And then Fred Gray, an attorney for the NAACP, sued the, fu sued the fuck out the government and received a settlement of $10 million. And with inflation, that's about $10 million. Uh, 50 about million. Three million. 50. Oh, because he got the inflation. Got I'm just adding. In, I'm just adding so people can get a, like an idea, like what that is now. Like ten million dollars back in the day, that's like fifty now. So to get like an idea, because I don't want anybody to just like, even though people died and people, um, black people lives are priceless. Some people might just scoff at the fifty. I mean, scoff at the ten million. I'm just letting you know it was like fifty million, just in case. Even even though no amount of money can like make up for losing your love losing 128 black black men yeah imagine that and then imagine if that was going on right now and that person would get you know how it correlates to now being basically 50 bit 50 million they'd be like oh you ain't start your llc with that money yeah like you know i'm 50 years old and my health is declining i don't think i keep, care about the llc and keep in mind it was 50 million and they had to split it between 600 families. Yeah, so. and I think long term, the family, if you're related to the person that got the syphilis, the experiment done on them, all you would get after that is just free health care. So after the money runs out, guess what? You go right back to America's health care system. Yeah, the one that fucked free. your family, the, the one that fucked your family over. You get more Absolutely. free health care. Bullshit, man. And I don't know if you've seen this to wrap this up. Uh, of course, nobody went to, ever went to prison for this because why would they go to prison? They uh they had Bill Clinton white ass. He uh he did, a Bill press con he did a press conference uh, apologizing for the United States over what happened during the, the Tuskegee experiments. Keep in mind, this was stopped in 1972. Bill Clinton didn't do this press conference until like 1997. So, what took so long for America to apologize? Well, you had the lesser of the evils before you got to the evil. So, 1972, I want to say Richard Nixon might have been in office, and I probably have that fucked up. Yeah, he yeah he was the one that passed the um the National Research Act, Nixon. Okay, it was Nixon, then it was his vice president after Nixon left because of Watergate. We can talk about Watergate as well. I <laughs> had a history teacher broke that shit down to me. I got to the list. Yeah, so after Watergate, the vice president stepped in because the main president had to step down because of that debacle. Then after that, we had the devil devil. We had Ronald Reagan. Then after that, we had senior George Bush senior who was the devil as well, but he wasn't that much of a devil compared to Ronald Reagan, but it's evil all around. Then we get to Clinton. So between that, we had four different. I got you, but like by the presidents. time, I got you, but right. by the time 1970, I mean, 1997 came, that was like, that was the beginning of Clinton's second term. That's what I'm saying. So we got three different devils before we got to the fourth one and nobody said anything. Nobody apologized. You know why? Because the one, the third one was too busy trying to get crack into the community and had the CIA distributing it and guns. So you got two presidents before that. So you got Nixon not apologizing, then you got his vice president not apologizing, then you got Reagan not apologizing. So you're absolutely right. So it took up until that point when that CDC document came out, you had 25 years to say something and apologizing you know that's great but it ain't gonna really do shit but at the same time at least say something so it's 25 years of you not saying nothing so it makes me think about now if this let's say this vaccine is is backwards i'm not saying it is people but let's say if this this vaccine is bad is it gonna take 25 years to get an apology for it causing ill effects to anybody particularly us because it always affects us the worst more than anybody yeah. 
or they won't apologize. But of course, when Bill Clinton he did the press conference uh, with the Tuskegee experiment survivors around that time, it was eight living, and only five was at the press conference. And of course, which is another issue with our, our community, they forgave the government for what they did, which is I don't know why we always gotta forgive and shit, but but yeah, they well, uh, go back to you know. Your great grandmother having a picture of Jesus on the wall, and Jesus is white. And I'm not here to bash uh, Yahshua because there's no J in the Bible. I'm not here to bash, but you know it's up there. So you gotta have. I think everybody wants a savior figure, but when you got one that embodies that, so to speak, because they told you they gave you religion, particularly Christianity, they gave you that, and. They made you feel good about having some type of hope, whereas your family members should be your hope. But years ago, if you're doing the same thing as me, which is picking cotton, how can you be my hero? Because I don't see you rebelling. I don't see you, I don't see a picture of you on the wall, even though you are my hero. You up here working with me. And it's unfortunate that we in this fucked up situation that the people that put us in this situation should never be forgiven for. You know, you put them in that situation and and you can't forgive this person. So it's like, I got to look up to something. Everybody has something to look up to or somebody to look up to in particular. But this is why I tell anybody, I don't care how fucked up your parents are. And maybe this is just me speaking. So don't take anything to mind what I'm saying. I'm just a person. That's why I tell everybody on every platform. This is just my opinion. No matter who you look up to, it should be your parent. Your parents are crackhead. Fuck it. It was a super crackhead. I got you. That makes sense. But yeah, it was just, it was, I I don't know. Like, I don't know if they got paid on the low that made them like apologize. Cause at this point they were, they were uh, older gentlemen. It was a lot of them was around like 80 years old. So I don't know if it's one of the things where uh, a lot of old people always bring up, like before you die, you need to forgive every you need to forgive everything. So I don't know. I don't know if it was one of them little, one of the repent situations where they were like, all right, I'm about to, I'm 80 years old. I might as well just forgive these motherfuckers. I don't know if it was one of them situations, but it was just, I don't know. Everything when I watched, I watched that whole press conference. It was around like 35 minutes. The whole thing just rubbed me the wrong way. And I was like, I was like, why is this on the internet? Well, they always gonna put shit like that on there because they particularly, well, this year that shit didn't work, especially when George Floyd uh, died. You know, a lot of people fell off the wagon. There's a lot of y'all motherfuckers. I saw y'all when that man died. Y'all was Black Lives Matter. I salute y'all for doing that. But a lot of y'all fell off the wagon. Now y'all just mad. Y'all not saying anything about being black. You're not proud anymore and all that. But anyhow, it's with us. We are a forgiving people because we love. You know, we love until you piss us off. And then, once again, motherfuckers wanna talk about, well, the black man that's upset, well, you gotta understand where that comes from. It's a mental thing. When you got people telling you you ain't shit from the time you born and yelling at you, that's how you gonna feel. It's programming, you gotta break that. So, particularly with those older people, it's true. I've heard old people say that too, man. You gotta get right with God, number one. And you got to get right with whoever you need to get right with before your time is up. Because a lot of people don't do that. You know, that's why they try to tell you to do that every day because you never know. And maybe they just felt like, you know what, fuck it. I'm here. I made it to be 80, even though my health is bad. I appreciate you for at least saying thank you. But they know what's up. You know, we the smartest people on the planet. We, we know what the fuck is up before it's up. I agree with that. I agree with that totally. Yeah. It's, it's like having six cents. I call it nigga senses. <laughs> well, shit, our shit going, our nigga senses going to be on a thousand on the 21st. Can't wait for that shit. I'm, I'm telling you, brother, they say it every single year, every single year on my birthday, some weird shit happened. And it's 2020. So I know some weird shit going to happen. So if you see me fly to Jacksonville or teleport over there, I'm, I'm there. I just want the superpower. I said it before. I want the superpower to make money appear. Give me that super. I don't know what type of superpower that is. Just make money come on my goddamn office. 
So my question is, if you don't get the powers on the twenty first, are you a coon? I saw you say that, and absolutely. Or you might be an animal. Maybe you, if you in between, like I feel like you know, I don't want to put no smut on his name, but he was in the military, so that makes him a coon to a certain extent. Uh, uh, Bobby Lash, I feel like he gonna be an animal. Bobby he might turn. He might be during the day. He might be a coon. Then he gotta hurry up and get to the cell phone so MVP could talk to him, and then it just goes away. Well, I know. I know you remember his WrestleMania match when he uh, wrestled Finn Balor. He had on them blue contacts. So there you go. Yeah, wasn't Lana uh, managing him at that point? Not yet. Yeah, I don't understand that. Like, bro, how you look like a Ninja Turtle, but you got blue contacts, bro? That made, yeah, that made no. That was a that was a bad time for Bobby Lashley. Of course, he lost. That was when um, Leo Rush was his manager. Okay, that's where the blue contest came from. All right. You're not low now, Bobby. I ain't about to say what I'm about to say because I forgot this got to come out to the public. So, <laughs> this is. I, What's on Patreon, right? Uh, It's going to start off on Patreon and then it'll eventually trickle to the people. But yeah. Okay, yeah, don't say nothing. Then. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about to say, you know, Patreon, we can say whatever. Yeah, I ain't about to say what I was about to say. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah. shout Leo Rush, I guess. That's by them ghosts. <laughs> Yeah, them Tariq <laughs> to Nasheed ghosts. Ghosts. <laughs> we don't need to. We don't need to talk about it. But y'all, y'all go check out that episode. I think it was the Big Boy Stakes episode. If y'all want that content? Yeah. So all right, man. So we uh. So I'm just gonna end this by saying, fuck the government. Fuck Bill Clinton. Uh, yeah, fuck Bill Clinton. He ain't, he ain't low, but people forgave him, so fuck it. Fuck um, Joe Biden as well. I'm here to say it. Fuck Biden. Fuck Trump too. Man, fuck all the presidents, bro. All the motherfuckers for the most part is the devil. Y'all can say what y'all want to me about Obama, but he ain't low either. Yeah, man. Just yeah, fuck all of it. Because they just injecting us with shit and whatever, man. So I don't know what's gonna go on with the uh with the COVID vaccine. So hopefully hopefully it'll go it goes good for us. But um Banks, I'll let you plug whatever you got. Uh, as far as R.O.P. Declassified, I think the next episode I'm going to do is the 27 Club episode. I'm going to do that by myself, and then we'll have Banks on for another episode, whichever topic we come up with. And I'll let you plug your shit. Yeah, I'll let you do that 27th one. I got my ideas on that one, but I'll talk to you off air about that. Uh, whenever you want me to come through, but once again, this, this is Banks, no rest. Two, hit me up on IG, Twitter. I mean, go on the link tree, man. I'm doing three, four, five, six, seven, eight podcasts, however many yeah, I got. got 20 podcasts, on. man. You crazy. Look, we working, bro. But sometimes I do want to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I do want to shut up. We're about to record in an hour or so, too. But, you know, follow me on there. I appreciate my brother for having me come through as always. R-A-O-P, man, I love them to death. Barber's Share Network, shouts out to them. Shouts out. Yeah, I'll plug everybody else shit like I usually do, man. Sign up for Patreon if you haven't already at R-A-O-P. Sign up for Black Announce Table, Patreon. Sign up for Barber's Share Network, podcast, Patreon. Shouts out to the Black Wrestling Podcast, Public Enemies, uh, the A Show. I feel like I'm missing somebody. Oh, the Black Variant. Otherwise, net the other podcasts I listen to, you already know the motherfucker's popular. Oh, Hoops and Brews. Shouts out to Hoops and Brews as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's your podcast with Nico? Uh, struggling for Success? Yeah, Struggling to Come Out on Time. This nigga put out an episode like Jay Electronica songs. Then y'all got, then y'all got like an episode with Donnie Lucci that need to come out? Gee, I literally, I would edit the episodes at night and have them motherfuckers out sent to him by the after the next afternoon yeah you might have to get to you gotta have a talk with that man because i've been wanting to hear that episode and then I'm, I'm, still I'm trying to tell you me and donnie just worked yesterday on the wrestling podcast with uh kayfabe ain't dead i do with my homeboy but he was out so i had donnie come through and i had davis my co-host for they called us mad man I had them on 
yesterday, and that episode is out now. I, I work fast, bro. <laughs> but far as Nico, like I said, he, he'll put that shit out weeks later, and it's like, bro, that, that's not how this works. Yeah, I was listening to that episode y'all deal with. Um...